Good evening, everyone. My name is Rob Rosello, and I am the executive director of R5 Productions and the director and playwright of this evening's performance of Cold Stun. So R5 Productions is an online radio theater company that was started in the summer of 2020 as a direct result of what I like to call the great pause in live entertainment. This, as we all know, was as a direct result of the global pandemic that shut down theaters, not only in our country, but around the world. We quickly realized that artists still had stories to tell and audiences still wanted to hear those stories. So Nancy Ridgway, Jim McIntosh and I got together that summer of 2020, called a couple of our actor friends that we had worked with previously, and we mounted our first production, the radio adaptation of H.G. Wells' thriller, The Time Machine. That season, we followed it up with seven more productions, including the legendary and iconic War of the Worlds, a couple of original works by yours truly, and a few Broadway shows and fan favorites like Other Desert Cities, God of Carnage, and Rabbit Hole. Now, Cold Stun was written in 2010, and it was loosely based on an actual event that happens every year on Cape Cod where hundreds of turtles mysteriously wash ashore. I based it on my time that I lived in Provincetown, Massachusetts, there on Cape Cod, as well as some characters that I met along the way while I lived there, as well as the many years that I went back to the Cape. The play received a full stage production in 2019, and this year I adapted it as a four-part radio thriller drama very much in the style of the dramas and serials of the 30s and 40s. So every Tuesday night at 7.30 Eastern in February, we'll air an episode of Cold Stun. And on the 28th, our final performance, we'll follow the live airing with a talk pack with the cast, myself, and our technical director and in-house composer, <laughs> Jim McIntosh. So if you enjoyed tonight's show, or if you want to hear it again, recommend it to a friend, or check out some of our other performances, you can do so on this YouTube channel or go to our website, r5productions.org. Please follow us on social media, both on Instagram and Facebook, and spread the word. We'll be here every Tuesday night at 7.30 in February. So without further ado, it is my honor to present to you the vocal talents of Stephanie Rogers, Ryan Henses, Jackie Meisner, and Sandra Hartman in the adaptation of my play, Cold Stun, Episode 1 just for today.
Darn it! Oh my god! Who the hell are you? I am so sorry! What are you? Oh no, I broke the glass. I'm so sorry. What are you? I, I'm looking for... What are you doing oh, in my house? I'm sorry. Hi. I, I'm, I'm gonna call the cops if you... Hey. Yeah, hey, it, it's Randall Cook. Listen, I, I'm sorry. What? No, I, I called you. Sorry, I just walked into my house and this woman is standing in my living room. No, I have no idea who she is. If you bothered to ask her... I found one, yes. A great hollow beach. I know. Listen, it's a turtle stranding. It was at the edge of the water and had some seaweed all over it. I almost missed it. I am sure. Please. I know what a boat propeller accident looks like. This was not a boating accident. This turtle was washed ashore, and you tell me. First one of the season. Can, can you hold on a second? Hello? Hello? You probably broke the phone. I'm back. It, it, it was the landline. And who still has a landline? I am telling you, that turtle was stranded. Yes, Great Hollow Beach. I covered it in seagrass. Oh, and my Orange P Town High School t-shirt to mock the spot. I had no reception. You, you know how that goes. I didn't get reception until I got back to the house. Okay, so I forgot my phone. What else is new? It's not cold enough. Shh! I didn't bring the turtle in. They usually... <sighs> They, they like to take the picture of the first turtle stranding on the beach. The water's too warm. Yes, with the person who found it. The, the Cape Cod Times. Or the banner. But the banner sucks. The water's too warm for a turtle to wash ashore. But it's cold enough for mittens? Uh, no, I wasn't talking to you. Can, can you hold a sec? Thanks. Hey, what are you... Guess you didn't break the phone after all. Hello? Hello? What? No, not not you. Hold on a sec. Can can you help me? You were going to call the police. This is an important call. What, one more sec, Bill. Oh, it could be the police. When did I have time to? What? No. You'll one sec. look like the fool. I didn't call the police because I didn't do anything. Here, just take this call. Can can you take a message? I'll, I'll call them back. I promise you won't call the police. All right. A promise. Yes, god damn it. I, I mean, darn it. Yes, I promise. And there's glass on the floor. And you're barefoot for some reason. Here, take this. Thank you. Hello? Sorry about... What? Oh, you heard. Sorry, I, th I thought I muted it. Um, yeah, so I, I walked into my house to call you and found this barefoot chick standing in my living room. Yeah, my boots were muddy and I was being considerate. Uh, I'm sorry? Oh, let me see if Mrs. Cook is in. Mrs. Cook, your wife? Oh, my mother. Well, she's probably still asleep, which is a total miracle with this racket. You live with your mother? It's a long story. Are, are you there yet? Can you see it? Well, get going. I'll meet you there. How long will it take you? Uh, may I take a message for Mrs. Cook? I think it was a Kemp's Ridley turtle. Maybe four pounds? Hold, please. Uh, they want to know where your mother gets her prescriptions filled now that Adam's Pharmacy doesn't fill them anymore. Stop and shop. Stop and shop. I can be there in ten minutes. Orleans or P-Town? P-Town. P-Town. Are, are you sure? I, I don't we mind. We will let her know. Thank you. Bye. Well, call me once you find it and let me know, okay? Yes, I'll have my phone with me. I'm on my way now, and I want my T-shirt back. What? Wait, did you hear me? I, I want... How did I just lose reception? Damn it! Darn it. Your mother can pick up her prescription this afternoon. For what? I didn't ask. Why not? It's none of my business. But you were okay to walk into my house uninvited? The door was wide open. When? A few minutes before you arrived. 
Did you knock? You knocked, said hello, no one and nothing. I was thirsty, so I got a glass of water and bam, there you were. I left a message that I was coming today. Oh, man. Yeah. Oh, man. You're, yes, that's am. how you knew, yes. and you're staying. Yes, here right. with you. I, I thought. Yeah, I would be a guy. The, the name. Yeah, easy mistake, I guess. Surprise. I'm Taylor Porter Smith. I'm Randall. Uh, who was that on the phone? Outer Cape Health. Why were they calling in a prescription for Maribeth? I didn't ask. Well, why didn't you put her on the phone? She's not here. It's not noon. She hasn't risen from her coffin yet. Of course she's here. Maribeth. Maribeth? Your mother is Maribeth? Cook? Yeah, the one, and thank God, only. Um, maybe she went somewhere. She doesn't drive. Oh, well, maybe she went for a walk on the beach. She hates the beach. It's right outside her front door. Look, I've got to go. But what about the broken glass? I'll get a dustpan. <sighs> uh, this photo on the mantle, is this you in the picture? You have twin boys? That's my dad with me and my brother. Here, I I'm tired of cleaning up everyone else's messes. Try not to cut yourself. We're not going to out of Cape Health for stitches. She's all yours. What are you doing with my mother? Ow! Wow, that sounded like it hurt. Maribeth, what the hey? Could have been worse. She could have bitch slapped you. Um, did we interrupt something here? Long story. Always is. Long time no see, hubby. Yeah, long time since last night, and I am not your hubby. In the eyes of the state of Massachusetts, you still are. What are you doing here? Bringing your mother home. And you're welcome. You gonna let her clean that all up by herself? I'm not talking to her. Oh, that's good, because she ain't talking to anyone either. M mother Just grunts and smacking her hand on the dashboard. Mother, here. She thought it was a good idea to snap her fingers at me at one point. Mother, let me help you. I nearly pushed her out of the car. Ow! Damn it! Ugh. There it is. Grunts and grumbles. Oh, how the mighty have fallen. Darn it. I said darn it. You should take care of that cut. And yes, Maribeth, he said damn it. Maribeth hates it when anybody curses around her. Which is hilarious. Right, Maribeth? And... I don't think we've met. I'm Aaron Cook. You're Aaron O'Reilly. I'm still Aaron Cook. You are until next month. I'm Randall's first wife, and apparently soon to be ex-wife. And for the official record, not by my choice, thank you very much. I've always been Randall's first wife. At least that's how his mother always introduced me. Right, Maribeth? Are you new in town? I work at Atta Cape Health. I'm a nurse. A real angel of mercy. Oh, I'm sorry. Where are my manners? Maribeth Cook, this is... I'm Taylor Porter Smith. Oh, uh, nice to meet you, Taylor Porter Smith. Uh, Randall, hubby, where's your shirt? Long story. Ain't it always. Zip up that damn jacket. People might get the wrong idea. Ow! You caught my skin! Oh, man up. Builds character. Sure we didn't interrupt something? Hello? Yes. What? Of course it... Don't you see my t-shirt? I'll, I'll be... Where? You're, you're heading there now? Well, let me know if it is or not. Yeah, thanks. Did they find it? Your turtle? Here we go. They said it wasn't there, and neither was my t-shirt. 
So what gives, Taylor Porter Smith? Must you? It's a name. Or had you not gotten that far? No. Big surprise. I'm named after my grandmother. That's why it's Taylor Porter Smith. My middle name is her maiden name. It's a family tradition. Got your bag outside? I nearly broke my neck tripping on it. Unless Charlie's moving back in. My brother is not moving back in. No, it's mine. I'll bring it in. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> moving in? Uh, oh, I'm here for the turtle rescues. Of course you are. I would love a shower, if that's okay. And then maybe we can go look for your turtle. Or your t-shirt, at least. Why not? They got a call from Eastham. Looks like someone else's picture is going to end up in the paper for finding the first turtle. Mother? Maribeth! Hey, she's not... Well, hey, wait a minute. She can't... Well, where am I going to sleep? Who is she? And why the hell is she moving in? She is my new partner for the turtle rescue. The wildlife sanctuary called and said they had someone coming in from the west coast san fran i think who need a temporary place to stay and when they said the name i assumed it was a dude taylor porter smith sounds like a serial killer a female serial killer all serial killers have three names like that i do not think she is a serial killer okay then sociopath you have invited a crazy west coast sociopath to live in your house she did practically say she was on the run from something, or, or someone. You ought to get to the bottom of that before. In the middle of the night, nobody moves to the out of cape at the start of the off-season without a really good reason. I'm just saying. And speaking of, want to talk for a sec about the other resident sociopath? My mother is not a sociopath. <laughs> there she goes with that damn finger snapping. Oh, guess who's sleeping in the loft? Oh, come on! <laughs> okay, so maybe Maribeth isn't a sociopath. Maribeth is not a sociopath. How would you know? How would you know? Hmm, which one of us went to college and which one of us is a part-time firefighter slash turtle whisperer? Mother, why can't she stay in one of the other cottages? We have six empty places, and no one's coming up to stay in them. Put her in one of those. I'm eating your last banana. Four. They were out this morning shutting off the water and electric. Welcome to fall in the attic cape. No, you lost weight. You look good. You were still here this morning? I was driving by and saw her trucking down 6A. Kind of hard to miss her. When did you go home? When was I here? Last night? Jesus, H, that sun. Give me your sunglasses. <laughs> Actually, best night's sleep I've had. At home. In our bed. Jesus, Aaron. Well, best night's sleep I've had since you moved out. Since you threw me out? These sunglasses are useless. If you drank a little less, maybe you wouldn't- We'll pretend you didn't say that. And you should be thanking me instead of lecturing me. Took me 15 minutes to get her into the car, and you know as well as I do, you can't tell that woman anything. This is the same woman, mind you, who insisted on wearing white to our wedding. And when I insisted that it was bad luck for anyone to wear white other than the bride, she said, it was a tradition for the Japanese to wear white as a sign of deep grief and mourning. Typical. Always cleaning up somebody else's mess. She's got some mighty big boots there, that Taylor Porter Smith. And, and, and what are you cleaning her muddy boots? Her mess. Her mess to clean. Quite the statement, coming from you. Come on, Eric. Pick up the banana peel. Gulls will get it. If Maribeth's... She won't want it. <laughs> but the gulls will. Bon appetit, kids. And you wonder why. Wonder what? Nothing. 
Listen, I'm known in town as being, and I quote, unapologetically fun. That was once. It was in writing. In the banner. Our very own local yokel version of the New York Times. They were quoting you. You said that. About yourself. It was in print, so it must be true. Why was my mother running down Route 6A? She wasn't running. In her nightgown? She had a coat on. And what's with her in the silent treatment? They don't know. They? I was on my way to work, so I took her in with me to add a Cape Health. And? Your mother can't speak. <laughs> I'm not <laughs> kidding. <laughs> What's wrong with her? They don't know, and neither does she. Apparently, she woke up this morning and, and couldn't speak. Then why are they writing her a prescription? Something so she can relax, and, and they're calling the therapist in Hyannis. A therapist? What, what for? What, what's a therapist gonna Your do? Your mother woke up this morning and couldn't speak. They checked her over head to toe. I was there. I watched, which could explain my queasy stomach. Could not find a thing wrong with her. Nothing. Nothing physical, anyway. That's... Wicked crazy, right? The woman who has something to say about everything, anything, and everyone suddenly can't say anything? <laughs> it's like a miracle. Would have come in handy a few years ago, but eh, better late than never. Th this isn't funny. No, you're right. It's not. Usually things like this happen after someone undergoes a tremendous shock or trauma of some kind. You were here last night, nothing out of the ordinary. No, from what I can remember, and that isn't much, it, it sounded and looked like another quiet, dysfunctional night at home with the Cook family. And, uh, I'm drinking your last ginger ale. <sighs> Rough night at the Squealing Pig last night? Oh, I hate that place. It's a dump. I was at the other dump. Governor Bradford? Maybe. What do you remember about last night? I dropped in at some point. I think. Something I miss? I left. Of course you did. Maribeth, she's just mad at me. She'll snap out of it. Maybe something happened after you left. What could have happened? Anything. Who knows? You walked out at one in the morning. Well, I had to go. Here we go. It was almost high tide, and I wanted to walk the beaches. There hasn't been a turtle stranding yet this season, and the conditions are almost right. We're kind of overdue. Oh, fucking turtles. I'm out of here. Okay, it's important to me. More than your own mother? Don't. It was more important than me, that's for sure. It's something that means a lot to me. You know that. Yes. God, how I know that drilled into me worse than nursing school and i hated nursing school you with the endless drills and questioning and lectures oh you loved it <sighs> come on you loved it and you know it at first sure the the promise of moonlit walks on the beach with the man that i love who wouldn't it all sounded so romantic it was the first couple times, sure, but night after night, day after day, every night, every September. October. When the water temperature dips below 60 degrees. 50 at degrees. At the height of low tide. High tide. The poor turtles freeze up and the mean old and at the mean old ocean currents. It's usually bay currents. Wash the poor helpless turtles ashore. And then? It's a race against time for St. Randall of the Atticape to swoop in and rescue their sorry asses. You used to love walking the beaches with me. All the time. Between that and the firehouse, it was the only time I could see you between October and March. For six months. It was worse than being a football widow. And, and since you didn't like me hanging around the firehouse... Well, the chief didn't like you hanging around the firehouse. So by default, it was the turtle walks or I never see my husband. Less chance you doing tequila shots with a stranded turtle. I don't think I didn't want to. 
I could have really used a drink out there more than once. Like the last time when you left me on Cornhill Beach? I had to call the wildlife sanctuary. It was my pre-cell phone days. It was pre a lot of things. And you made me promise. I did not. You made me swear when the time came for our tour to go to Boston that we would drive it up together. I wanted to do some retail therapy in Boston. Oh, what I wouldn't give for old Filene's basement. God, I miss that store. Do you remember the name we gave it? The old Filene's basement? Our turtle. No. You named it. Whatever. You remember. Yes. Okay, I do. We called the turtle. We called the turtle Brianna. Because? It was my favorite little girl's name. And then that August? A lot happened that August. After Brianna stint in rehab. She got an exclusive interview with Oprah, a couple of red carpet appearances, some magazine covers, and went on to have a very successful TV film recording career. Her release party? For her hit single, Baby Wash Me Ashore One More Time. When we released her back into the ocean. And you cried like a baby. Okay, you weren't the only one. I mean, her name was Brianna. I wish someone had been there to rescue us when we washed ashore. He was. Unfortunately, it, it wasn't me. Get those boots nice and clean for Taylor Porter Smith. She's gonna need them when she bolts out of here. Nice and clean, Taylor Porter Smith. Hey, don't throw those boots. I just cleaned them. Oh, and do not snap those fingers at me. I know, I know. Look, don't slam the screen door. Yes, I'll wipe the table down. She's going to use up all the hot water. Yeah, it's your appointment book. So? Yes, I, I see you have two appointments today. And? I'm not calling anyone for you. You first. What's with the silent treatment? <sighs> Write it down. Write me a letter. Tell me what's up. You had a lot to say last night. Like, why don't you keep going? And, and while you're doing that, I'm going to go see what the hell happened to that turtle I thought I found this morning. And yes, I just said hell. No. No. That, that's a damn lie. Ugh. Fine. I'll call them. Is there someone else these people can call to do the service? Is her number in here in, in case they ask? Okay. I see. I see Outer Cape called a prescription to stop and shop for you. Aaron said Outer Cape is also calling a therapist in Hyannis. G give me my cell phone. I'll call them from the beach. I got to get out of here before I say something I regret. Again. Hi. Uh, this is Randall Cook. My mother is Marabeth Cook. Yeah, yeah, she's lost her voice and won't be able to do your wedding ceremony to today. 
No, I, I know. It, it's okay. No, no, please. Look, I know it's last minute. I know it's really last minute, but she wanted me to give you the number of someone else who can marry you. I know it's short notice and all, and, and she's really sorry. <clears throat> I I know you don't know me. Well, you know me, but you don't know me is what I mean. Uh, looks like I forgot to pack my hairbrush. I, I can buy one when I go into town, and I hate to ask, but do you happen to have a brush I can borrow? <sighs> oh, a, a comb. Sure. Okay. Uh, thank you. It it'll be fine, I guess. Uh yeah, I'm sorry to pry, but do you have laryngitis? Is that why you can't speak? Oh, you're writing. Okay. I don't have... What is that word? Foggy laryngitis? Oh, oh, you don't have effing laryngitis. Fucking laryngitis. You don't have fucking laryngitis. Got it. <laughs> and uh, thank you for the brush. My hair. Yeah, it was shorter when you saw it. Uh, maybe lighter because it was the summer. Oh, ow! Ow! Oh, it's stuck. I. The calm is... Ow! <sighs> oh, this is embarrassing. I, I'm sorry. First, I have to borrow your comb and... Now I got it stuck in my hair. The long hair was never my thing. Growing up, it was always short. And now I guess I know why. It's easier. Oh, what is that? What are you combing through my... What's in the bottle? Oh, it smells like olive oil and lemons? Did you put lemon juice in my hair? It's going to streak my hair. Please stop. <sighs> ow, ow. No, no, do not cut my hair. But that, that, what's in that bottle? It'll bleach out my hair. Oh, oh, oh I see. Oh, oh, wow. The comb, it's not stuck anymore. Wow. You're welcome. For what? Oh, huh, you mean, yes, yes. Thank you. Oh, I, I'm sorry. Thank you. I'm sorry I was such a baby. I, I was just worried the lemon juice and the sun. But you're right. That was a clever home remedy. I'll have to remember that. Olive oil and lemon juice. <sighs> I'm so sorry. Wow, I, I came in here like a tornado. Hurricane Taylor. Sorry about all that. And, and thank you for not saying how you knew me to your son, by the way. It's a long story. I'd rather not get into it right now. Thank you for letting me stay with you. I promise I won't be any trouble and should be able to find a place soon. It is the start of the off season, so it, it should be pretty easy. That photo on the mantle there, Randall, he and his brother, they look just like their father. Hmm. Well, great first impression there, Taylor. Great. Boy, <laughs> my boots look amazing. Thank you, Randall Cook, I suppose. <sighs> Stop calling me! I said stop calling! No, no, no! Well, no more phone calls from California, I guess. I am grateful to be back on Cape Cod. <laughs> I am grateful 
for the smell of the water. I am grateful to be out of California. I am grateful for this place to stay. I am grateful for natural detangler. I am grateful that not even lemon juice can touch my auburn hair now. You good? Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. All good here. Ameribeth's in her room. Hey, thanks for the clean boots. Welcome. I gotta make a call. I am grateful for a new start. I am grateful for the turtles. I waited a lifetime for you. Never sure I'd find you. Frightened that you'd never come. Every coin tossed in a fountain, every wish upon a star, all to find a love like you. And then one night I turned and there you were. I dreamed of a life with you and here my dreams come true. <laughs> now I stand with you where the heavens meet the sea. And now I promise this, my wedding vows to you. I promise my love, I promise my heart I offer my friendship, I offer devotion, I pledge my hand in yours, I pledge my soul to you, never will you walk alone, never will I leave your side. Take my hand, take my heart, I share this dream I found in you. Uh, should we go back and look for your turtle? It's not there. I just called them. To called them again. Do you want to walk and look for others? Or? It's coming up on low tide. High tide isn't until later this afternoon. There won't be anything until then, anyway. You, you left your mittens inside. Oh, <laughs> thanks. Nice ring you got there, by the way. Oh, it's yeah. Aaron still wears hers. Wedding ring, that is. Oh, this. Yeah, oh, this. It, yeah, it's a family ring. Grandmother. <laughs> the one you're named after? No, no. Someone else's grandmother. Oh. No one important. I should actually... Oh, God. What's wrong? It won't come off. Well, maybe if it you... It won't come leave, off. Leave it for now. No, I can't. It has to come maybe off. Maybe just... Get it off. I want it off. Uh, oh, I'm. Uh, I'm don't sorry. worry about it. Don't, don't be. You, you oh, got a pretty I'm good sorry. pitching arm there. Thanks. Your, your ring's got good company. My ring's out there too. Uh, I think I'll walk down the beach for a bit, if that's okay. Uh, I'll be inside when you're ready. I'm grateful for starting to let go. Tune in next Tuesday for Cold Stun Episode 2, The Promise of Tonight.